All right, this is a quick video tutorial on how to use the GoVenture CEO simulation. Uh, once you get logged in the simulation, you'll see this screen. You can either click through up here and close the window to come back to this main screen, or you can click these icons uh, that are identical down here on the bottom and move through the screens. So this first screen uh, is where you pick your company logo, pick your company name, and you'll get some basic information on the industry. Uh, the most important bit is this amount right here. 1.5 million is what an average performing company will have in revenue each month. So you'll want to use that to figure out how many units to make. Uh, this screen gives you a nice overview of uh, the stuff. We haven't done anything, so it's a lot of zeros. This is where you'll pick your selling price and how many units to produce. So if that 1.5 million uh, divided by three, which is the default, would then be 500,000 units. Uh, we may decide to change that, but we'll just fill that in for now. Uh, this is where you decide your R&D. So this is how you make your product better by spending money on different things, on flavor. Um, this is telling you you're gonna have to change the number of employees as you change your R&D. Um, but we're not totally sure what kind of customer what customers want, so we'll have to come back to the screen. This is where you set your uh, marketing um, budgets and type, and if you want to move into the other territories. You always start in one, it's usually the largest territory, and then you have the option to move out to the other two. And then you can set your sales in here, and then you have to pick your advertising mix here. So uh, the advertising mix, you get some media reach over here, so you can find out what uh, works in each territory because it'll be different. Uh, radio, newspapers, TV, video, those all seem to work well. So we'll just go ahead and make this add up to 100. And uh, we'll come back to that screen in a minute. This is where you pick uh, how many people you need to hire. Uh, based on some of our other choices, it's been filling in how many uh, employees we'll need. This is also over here where you can do training that will improve the uh, employees, make them more productive, etc. cetera. Um, and this is where you will set all their benefits. So uh, pay has a, a default, um, but then also all of your benefits here. And if you wanna like give health insurance and life insurance and maybe contribute to their pension, new employee orientation. These are all choices that you can make and decide on uh, how you want to do that. And I can close that window, come back here, close that window, come back. Um, this next uh, screen is where you get very important reports. Many of those reports are looking at the past. So on your first uh, time unit, be that a month, year, whatever, uh, they will be blank with the exception of your consumer profiles. Um, that uh, are static across the simulation. So once you've bought them once, you don't need to buy them again. Um, but um, this competitiveness report will be very useful after a turn has happened because it will show you what other people picked uh, for much of their stuff so you can compete with them better. Um, but we can't do that yet, but we can go ahead and buy a consumer profile. I'm gonna buy it from Metropolis since we're already there and it will pop up here. So this is a breakdown of the consumers in that territory, both in what they care about. Um, I personally like the bar graph uh, for the visual. And if they are different sizes, you'll be able to see that here and sort of the relative amount of uh, revenue that each consumer segment has. So for instance, uh, consumer group two is very price conscious because uh, 40% of their decision is coming from the price of the product. So that'd be a good one to go after if you are trying to um, provide a low cost alternative. Um, looks at consumer group five, uh, really cares about vitamins. Um, so you'd wanna focus on that if that's the consumer group that you're going to pick. And I think we will pick that one for this example. Um, but pay attention that uh, consumer group five is a smaller group. So uh, you need to be careful uh, if too many people are fighting over that small group, then it could be you know really high competition. Um, but for the sake of this exercise, that's what we'll do. 
All right, and uh, so that's a lot of this information is the same, just presented in different ways depending on how you care about it. So now we have sort of a strategy. This last uh, tab over here gives you all your financial reports, which again, since nothing has happened, uh, a lot of that is not useful now, but after the first uh, time period, you'll have profit loss, uh, you'll have units sold, uh, which can be useful, uh, especially if you're in multiple um, areas, it will break it down by units sold in each area, uh, which can be useful because you have to decide that on this screen. Uh, if you distribute to other places, then you'll have to divide that up to like, I'm gonna do 70 here or whatever, and you know, I'm gonna do 30% to the suburbs. Um, we're not gonna uh, do that for this round. So, now that we've decided on uh, what kind of customer we're going after, we can come back to the R&D screen and uh, spend a lot of money on our vitamin research. Uh, customers cared a little bit about flavor and electrolytes, so we'll do a little bit on that. Uh, containers, uh, we'll go with plastic for now. And uh, for sales and marketing, this will uh, let customers know about your product, obviously, but will also increase your brand image. So if you're going after uh, customers that care a lot about brand image, you want to spend more on marketing. Um, but our customer group only sort of cared about that, so we'll uh, spend $50,000 this month on uh, marketing. So now that we have uh, made some decisions, we can now come in here and see how many employees we'll need. So. Uh, we're going to need 11 uh, production, 6 R&D, 2 sales, 2 operations, and 1 manager to manage all those wonderful people. All right, so now we can go save our turn. I think I've done everything right. If not, you'll get a red screen that will tell you what else needs to be done. Um, one thing that often gets forgotten is that uh, setting up that advertising mix where it has to add up to 100% that I showed you earlier. So this number will tell you, tells us that 52% of our production and inventory needs to be sold for us to break even. So that's a reasonable number. A reasonable number is going to be anything between like 25 and 85%. Uh, closer to 25 if you're going for a high margin product, closer to 85 if you are going for a low cost solution. It will also tell you if you're not gonna be profitable no matter how much you sell, and then you really need to go back and make some different decisions. So this is a nice little gut check, but again, it does not guarantee that we will sell this many, but it's just giving us an idea of how much we have to sell to break even. So to show you how those numbers can kind of change, we'll go back here and say we want to uh, sell our product for Four dollars. Now, if we are the average company with 1.5 million divided by four, gives us 375,000. Um, but we think we're going to be a little above average, so we're gonna we're just gonna make that uh, 400,000 units that we're gonna create and sell. Uh, hopefully, all of them at four dollars a pop. So now, when we uh, come back here, some of these numbers have altered. So now we only need nine uh, people in production because we're not making as much uh, sports drink. And then we can go hit save again. And so now we're at 44% of our product inventory because uh, our margins are a little better. Um, so we're selling for higher and our uh, production costs have gone down because we're not making as much. So then uh, one last thing, just to kind of show you guys how it would work. Uh, let's say we have gone through the work and looked through the reports for the metro and the suburbs and found out that uh, people in the suburbs also really care about vitamins. And so uh, they would be a good place to uh, also distribute to. So there's a one-time fee of $100,000 and it's gonna increase our transportation costs. But we've decided this is uh, worth it strategically, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, then we also need to go in here into the advertising mix and set up what the suburbs cares about. Let's see, sponsorships, events, direct mail. All right, let's do a lot of events and some direct mail and magazines. And now we're at 100. All right, so uh, the suburbs are not as important to us, so we'll spend 20,000 
uh, on advertising out there. Now we'll come double check this and uh, as I thought, all right, so now we're gonna need one more sales and marketing person and one more production person and everything else looks good. If you end up not doing this, we'll just show you how that works. And you go to save, it'll tell you uh, that your product inventory is uh, not at 100%. So go to sales and marketing. Oh, and that's uh, something I'd forgotten. So here we'll set Metropolis at 70, this at 30. Again, the one you start in is usually bigger than the other two. So that's a reasonable number to start with. I'll go hit save and now it will show us the error that I was expecting that we did not have enough uh, employees. So now we'll go uh, add that extra employee and hit save again. So now uh, notice this is now up to 56% and part of that is we had the one time cost of 100 grand to expand to that new territory and so that increased our cost. Uh, so now we have to sell more stuff to break even. And that's it. After we've saved, we can come down to the menu and hit quit.